Carol Martine, welcoming you back to my studio. This morning, I'm going to do another Just For Me project in my Just For Me watercolor practice journal. The last time I worked in this journal was in the beginning of April, and I worked on these this expressive flower bouquet. And before that, I tried an abstract expressive flower bouquet from this picture. And we worked on hydrangea florets and so forth. But today, I thought I would go back to something I had done in August last year with the help of a very, very vague pencil sketch for the main flower. Today, I'm going to try to rework this image, but to try to do it without the starting sketch. I have no idea where we're going to go, whether these are going to be similar or not, but Practice will be great fun, and I just feel like playing in my watercolors today. So, this is the goal. I'm going to start with this center-wrapped section of the rose. I'm also going to be using, if you will notice, I'm going to be using my Schmincke watercolors. I thought I would give them a trial run also. I was lucky to find these very expensive puppies on super sale because the box was kind of messed with, but all of the colors were there, so I attached my quarter pans to the tin box by placing magnetic, a magnetic strip under each and I put them in order that I find comfortable working with. I've made it mine, and here we go. To begin, I'm going to try again to work using water instead of pencil to draw this center section of our rose. I think I'll leave that here. There we go. So, let's see. I can't. get this drawn on using the water and I have to tilt and move this about a little bit so that I can see where the water is all righty Do you see that, Ja? I hope you're able to see this. Now, let's go and plunge in. And I think I'm going to start with some of this ochre. And I'm going to just drop it down into the water that I have here. Let's see if I can make this water move a little bit. All right. Now we have the outline 
of our center section. So next I'm going to add a little bit more burnt sienna to our mix just to give one side a little bit more depth of color. Now, I'm going to stay away from this area because it's still quite wet. Let's see now if I can use clean water to suggest this petal up here in the back area and we're going to leave lots of that very 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 wet let's see if we can Add just the slightest bit of coloration to that water. And let's see if we can make that move around to suit us. This side is starting to dry nicely, so I'm going to bring this big, this large area around. Try this color, Naples Yellow, with maybe just a touch, Naples Yellow with maybe just a touch I believe of the Naples with a little bit of burnt sienna up in this area. this area and this and this laid in. I'm going to do this big one over here now. I don't know where to put this so that it'll be good for you to see and for me to work with. I think I'm just going to, to put it right there. Put this this way and this here. And I hope See that? I'll back this out just a little bit. All righty. Now we're going to work on this one. And this is rather a large one. So I'm going to lay that water down. I'm going to lay that water down and 
tilt it so that I can see where the water is. Because after all, I'm trying to paint with water here. Now, let's add just the tiniest bit of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, just a tiny bit of burnt umber, my, my, my. All righty, let's spread that over here, thin it down nicely. Let's see what happens now because we are going to need a little color here. And maybe a bit more bleed down this way and this paper is drying fast today. Let's see if I can spread this down this way a little bit. Yes, that's good. Alrighty. So we're starting to get hints of where we want to be here. Let me go in now and come back over to this section working in this area now. And I'm going to use just a little bit of the mixture that we have already used with just a little bit of this brown. Give it an opportunity to move around Next, I'm going to work in this area, which would be this big petal. Let me see if I can lay down some color here. Some water and just a little bit of color and Just a little bit of this to move in the water with a little bit of the darkness to let it bleed down. Yes. Now, let me close up this rose area. See if we can just drop some color onto that water. area here. Alrighty, let's get some 
good water so that this pigment can work. And I'm going to come back down to this dark umber we have here. And I'm going to invite it to move down. this original this original petal could be brought out made larger and so I'm just going to try to do that over here and I think this one might also do well to have just a tiny touch of green, mild green added here. So, we have an under layer of coloring here. Still have some shine from our wet spots, and some spots are drying. And I'm going to help them to do that a little bit more by drying artificially. If you will remember, I usually like to try to dry the back side of watercolor paper because the water does tend to soak through this nice quality paper and it takes some of the buckle out when you do it this way. And then when you re-warm the top area, it settles right down like a balloon that's lost its air. So, now, time to think and decide and mull this over. This was sketched with pencil, and this was sketched on using water, and this, of course, being watercolor, it has dried lighter than the colors that we applied, but it shows that we are able to suggest or express the concept of a flower without sketching and using, in fact, using water to do that job. Where will we go with this? Let me review and think to myself the parts of this that I'm really liking. I'm really liking the white areas that have been left in this flower. particularly liking this one, this petal, this one. In fact, I find that quite pleasing, but I'm thinking I might want to add a little bit more depth in certain areas to bring out a, just a little bit more of color-wise along this area 
and that will require some darkness. Maybe just coming down here a little bit, not too much. And maybe add a little bit of this color up here on one side of these. Let's try that. Okay, let me re-clean this brush. We dip into our clean, clean water. And let's add just a little bit of water to give this pigment some breathing room that I'm going to be putting in here. Let's see what happens now when we go back to our palette colors. Which can stand a little bit more water. Just dropping dots of color down, as you'll notice, and letting, letting them move with the water. And I think I'd better keep my this paper in my hand so that I can force gravity to help me with this job. putting clean water right up against the lines to help them to soften. And I thought I might come back up here Possibly add some color depth and warmth into this area. And this area. Now, I'm feeling that I want to go back to that bit of green that I laid out before and see, I can't put more of it over on this one. Yes, yes. And maybe just a little bit more. Just a little bit more over 
here. I'm laying my brush, if you'll notice, almost on its side. some of this green should not be helped down into this petal a little bit. Yes. Now I think I want to be a little bit stronger with this burnt sienna here for the center of our flower. And I want to take that down a bit. I don't want it to be high orange at all. that. Yes. Okay. Let's try that here. Let's drop a little bit of that into this area now. Now, let's see if we have improved things at all. And I think I'm going to set this aside now, because I think that has done its job. Let's see where we are. I'd like to do something. Take some of that line out of there. No, I don't think so. Let's see what happens. We can make it move a little bit. a little pigment there just to kind of mark the little bit more the edge of the petal. Yes, I think that has done the job. And I want to mark the edge of this petal a little bit too. So, now, how exactly do we achieve making this stand out a bit more is to just add some hints of color to the center of this rose. And now, 
in order to bring out this lightness on our paper, we're going to have to do something to suggest or bring in the idea of leaf or just something darker than this color to make that pop forth. Let's see. We might use our big, 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 big brush. And let's put some water down on our paper here. In areas. around in between these petals. All right. And in order to make this work, I want to go into a little of this green, which is kind of fresh, and some of our colors that we have on our palette mixed in to soften it up. And let's drop some of this color here. And a little more suggestion, slightly dirty water certainly lets us know where we are going, where we're moving with our water. pigment in here to let it move with the water. And a little bit here. Let it happen. And now let's go back and add some other colors. Certainly in here. Oh my, isn't that pretty? Just likes to. Now, just this little bit of an addition of color, you will notice, has brought out the color and shape of some of those petals. Now I'm going to make the leaves, the suggested leaves that we're working on right now, I'm going to allow them to be stronger. In fact, I'm going to encourage the water 
to move and add some strength. to our composition. So, now, how much fussing do we, do I think I want to do around some of these areas close to the center of the, well, the heart of the petal. I have to be very careful to add clear water so that it gives it a little bit of something to grab onto. Now, I think I'm wanting to lay in some more of our green here to make a stronger suggestion of a leaf shape. to stop because I have certainly learned something today. Now, the question is, after I dry this, do I want to further embellish this with a little tiny bit of very fine line work so as to bring it forward? Let's dry it and see what happens. I'm going to get my very, very finest black permanent marker. I'm going to add just a touch. 
Alrighty, I've gotten my Uniball Sig Sigma, sorry, Signo Ultra Micro 207 pen. Absolutely fine, 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 super fine. Love it, love it, love it. Not easy to find, but here we go. Let's just, if you'll notice, I'm holding the pen so that I am not really able to add heavy or strong lining to the areas that I think might do well. And if you'll notice, I'm following the line of the pigment in some of the areas. go. Just base suggestion. of the area where the petal begins and ends. This is a rather clean area, easy to decipher. And this one. This is a case, and I really do believe that less is more. Maybe just a little more depth right in here where the stamen would be in the rose. And I'm going to stop because I have had fun. I have learned something. But I have such a road to travel and I can't wait to get started on it. Because I was quite proud of this one a year ago. But this one is demonstrating some of the things that I have learned in the interim. If you have enjoyed watching this journey, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back soon with more watercolor just for me. Bye now.